founded Honouring the Ancient Dead in 2004 as an advocacy group for the ancestors, the physical evidence, the remains, as we say, human remains of our ancient dead and how they're treated by archaeologists. And not only that, working with a lot of pagans in that arena, that forum of discussion, but also talking to people about living with honour. I discovered that a lot of pagans call themselves animists. But while I'm very happy to recognise that over 25 years of druidry, there are a great many druids whose beliefs and understanding of the world is very, very different from my own, and they're still druids, fine. I had another assumption that animists, which is not a tradition, it's a belief, that I would be in harmony with other animists. And I just discovered that that wasn't the case at all. Um, there were just as many distinct differences between myself and other animists as there were between myself and other druids. <coughs> Why? There were distinct differences that were being played out as distinctly different moral or ethical decisions and values. Okay, let's think of these two, or two, two issues that I can describe this, I can explain this one. The first is the dividing line. If we call ourselves animists, what are we considering to be filled with whatever it is, spirit, soul, life? The ocean. Most animists would say, yeah, there's a spirit of the ocean, even a god maybe of the ocean, or a goddess or someday, but certainly a sentience or a, a being, an intelligence, a wholeness <laughs> within the ocean, definitely. What about a puddle? Um, some people might say, yeah, there's a spirit in the puddle. Well, it depends how big the puddle is. Why? <laughs> <laughs> what about a river? Let's go back to the easy bit. Okay, a river. A river has a spirit. <coughs> across Europe too. So here we have, yes, we can recognise that there's an animism works for the river. What about the stream? About a glass of water. Am I just getting silly now? But what about the hydrogen atom? Or what about the quarks? What about the tiny little creatures? Underneath what scientists refer to. Where, where's the dividing line? Are you talking puddle isn't but river does? Are you talking hydrogen doesn't go? A stream does? What about a desert? Does a desert have a spirit? What about a grain of sand? What about the wonderful great stones that make up Stonehenge or you know the Derbyshire stones on the moors or what about the pebbles in your driveway? Where's where's the dividing line? Where's the, what about the grit in the teeth? What has spirit and what doesn't? Bacteria? Well, you know, animism, surely. We're, we're thinking about something that's worth looking after. So we're looking at dogs and cats and fungi, maybe, on some level as a collective species, but certainly not bacteria. Viruses. Where's the dividing line? Mostly, that dividing line exists, subconsciously. Another assumption. And an assumption that's usually quite uncomfortable to discover. Okay, the other issue is dualism. This, I think, is probably where my animism diverges most from. Other animists that I speak to, I am not a dualist. I don't understand dualism. The spirit or soul to the dualist is separable from the body, from the matter. Um, I'm often reminded of a talk where I, um, when we did the big 
pain federation talks or something, I think in Croydon, Fairfield Hall. And I'm often reminded of when I apparently stood on the main stage and hollered at 1,500 people that the moon is just a fucking rock in the sky. And I'm reminded of it by some who say, yeah, I love your down-to-earth, you know, solid, naturalistic, religious attitude, it's great. And others who say, yeah, but you're not religious, are you? He said something like that, which is clearly desecration. It's, 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 you're, you're not a spiritual person because you think everything's just matter. I'm not a dualist. And another thing, and another thing. <laughs> often people don't understand themselves to be dualist, but their belief, that assumption, which often we're taught when we're young, which is in there from when we're little, either from a religious upbringing and a Jewish upbringing like Christianity or just fairy stories of some kind. But it all comes out of death. When we're faced with death and the horror of annihilation, that's the only other option, then we hold on to the spirit flying free and going off to somewhere else. That's another uncomfortable assumption that often comes out. The world I think is useful to be aware of. Oh, I'm definitely not dualist, I think, you know, but actually, yeah, when someone's dying, oh, they've had a rough ride, but they're going to be okay now. They're going to pass off into the other lands, the summer lands, the Isles of the Blessed, wherever it may be, some kind of heaven, redeemed and restored. I'm not a dualist because I can't afford to be a dualist. I couldn't afford to be a dualist right from the beginning of understanding my not particularly well-functioning body. If I thought that I would be happier, there was a heaven, there was another place to go, <laughs> I would have gone there a long time ago. I need to understand my religion is in my body as much as it's in the mud and the stones and the light beams and the darkness. I need it all to be here. I'm not a dualist because I cannot get over the fundamental philosophical problem that philosophers have fought for millennia about dualism, which is essentially if there is two, I'm talking about metaphysical dualism, not psychological dualism, where there is matter and then there is soul or spirit or mind. Or consciousness, matter and mind, body and spirit. Two stuffs, two distinctly different stuffs that create these things. And philosophically, how do they interact? If they're two totally different stuffs, how do they interact? They can't interact if they're totally different because there's nothing they have in common simple, logical, unbridgeable problem. Of course, some folks say, yeah, well, God sorts that out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure, perhaps, that's a reasonable answer, if you believe in a God who does sort out those problems. But, actually, for me, as a thinking, questioning, indignant, philosophical, druid person, uh, that's like saying, well, why? Just because. Just, just because. You know, God becomes a backstop. Don't know. So, God sorts it. We can't, under we'll never understand. We shouldn't even be looking. Oh, don't patronise me. I want to know. I need to understand, so I'm going to, I might be wrong. I might, I might be one of those people standing up at the pearly gates saying, all right, yeah, fine. I got it wrong. I don't really care. My life here is about questioning. And I don't understand what that interface could be. So philosophically, I can't accept dualism. But in this culture that we live in, it seems that the only options are dualism or materialism. It's the, just the rock in the sky thing. Well, of course, you know, you're not a religious person. You're not a spiritual person. You think the moon's just a rock in the sky. That means you think it's just 
in sentient meaningless matter. I don't believe in sentient meaningless matter. I'm an animist. So I'm not a materialist. Apart from anything else, materialism has fundamental philosophical flaws as well. No one understands what mind is. In fact, the real hardcore materialists consider mind or consciousness to be an illusion. There is just dull matter, nothing else. In fact, you know, some good folks like Descartes, <coughs> you, you have to admire, even if you don't agree with him. Grumpy man, he was. Wonderful. But actually, the only thing we know, the only thing we can be certain of, is the fact that we're thinking. So matter is a long way from certainty or understanding. And that, which Descartes said 400 years ago or so, has not changed. The only thing we can really still be, think, be clear about, or certain of, is the fact that we're thinking. We don't even know what the I is, what the I am thinking. All we know is that there is a thinking going on, and that thinking is observing the thinking which is mind, not matter. So do we go into ideal idealism? In other words, there is nothing but mind. Well, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an animist. I'm pagan. I can't do the philosophical floor. I can't jump that in idealism, which is, how can we have any kind of commonality of experience if actually we're all just individual separate thinking people. Well, the answer to that simple again is it's God. God sorts out that bit. Or there is a whole of God if you, if you go sort of into Bishop Barclays. Oh, it's just God, who was a wonderful Protestant Irish philosopher. God sorts out the bits and makes sure that we all see the tree in the same sort of way, or enough of the same sort of way, so we don't fight. Or else we go into the Oriental the Eastern traditions which have a wholeness within which we're all fragmented. I'm sorry, those are valid questions, but my entire heritage comes through this side of the world. I don't quite understand philosophy that comes through ancestors you know, too many thousand years ago for me to feel them in my blood. I have to ask my questions and I have to answer my questions in my language and the language of my blood and the language of my land. I'm a bit worried that I will not understand where the assumptions are if I'm taking a philosophy or a religion from a landscape that isn't in my ancestors' blood. So it's a bit of a mess then, really.